Don't need no baggage. Just get on board. All children of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It will enable you to stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Quayne. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, wherever you are at the sound of my voice. I thank God for your life and um, trust that you are doing well. I declare to you that it is well with you and your house, wherever you are under the sound of my voice. Let's have a word of prayer and um, get to work, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day. This is a wonderful day you have given to us. We are going to rejoice and celebrate and be glad in it. For this is your handiwork. It is marvelous and wonderful. And we are excited to come to this new segment of growth and increase, bringing revelation knowledge to your people. Lord, I pray for this, your precious ones. Let understanding increase and abound. And may we be solidified in that which Jesus has done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, let me also acknowledge uh, those of you on the other platforms. Um, the um, uh, you, know, you know who you are. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm on the Facebook here. But the other, other platforms, which is also live, um, I may not be able to see your face, but I thank God for your life. I thank God for your life. All right. And so um, it is well with you and your house. Let's go straight to the word of God. For, uh, I think we are a little bit um, behind schedule, but we're going to catch up with the word. Okay. Well, we've been talking about, we've been talking about faith, not works in the new covenant. Faith not works in the new covenant in the new covenant it is not about it, your works in the old covenant it was about works it's about what you have to do and so <clears throat> we've been talking about the difference between the covenant so that you will have a better understanding of the covenant in which god has with you in your dispensation of the now God deals with his people by dispensations and by covenant. And we are living in the dispensation of grace and truth. According to John chapter 1, verse 17. John chapter 1, verse 17. So we are living in the dispensation of grace and truth, which came by Jesus. We are not living, we are not under the law that came by Moses. We are we are living under the, the dispensation of grace and truth that came by Jesus. I, I hope you understand that. And so when you are able to identify the difference where you are concerned of the two, then you can then begin to apply 
okay, the, 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 that which is in this dispensation into your life and then see the manifestation of the power of God. If, if you don't do that, if you do not do that, you're not going to see it. If you, if you don't do that, you will, the, the tendencies of you mixing the old and the new is very, very, very close. And um, that will not let you see the, um, um, the benefits. Okay? So, therefore, this is what a lot of believers are doing now, most believers. And uh, when you leave, when you are leaving by the old dispensate, by the old um, uh, agreement in the noun, it's going to be your effort, your ability, your works that will get you what you're looking for. And that is where you are, you will, if you are not careful, you will even think that God is not listening to you or God is not hearing you. Because God deals with his people by dispensation and by covenant. In this dispensation and in this covenant that God has established with you and me through Jesus, the understanding is that Jesus is the mediator, okay, between God the Father and you. And that is why when you pray, you say, in Jesus' name. Because he, God, knows who is the mediator of this dispensation. In the dispensation of the law, it was Moses who was the mediator between God and the people of Israel. In this dispensation of grace and truth, God knows Jesus as the mediator between he, God, and you. If you don't understand this and if you are not able to put them in their right um, uh, right positions, beloved, you're going, to be, you're going to be confused and you're going to be mixing everything together. And that will not, it will frustrate you. Why? Because you're not going to be getting the answers that you're looking for. And therefore, it, it, the, 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 I mean, you're going to be on a treadmill, basically. Because interestingly, Interestingly, you go, you you are going to, you know, lean to the left, which is the law, because human beings we believe it's just a human phenomenon. I mean, the tendency of you doing something because you've been told that there's there's no free lunch. Everything that you you have or you want, you must work for it. The works in this dispensation here. It's not the work that gets you what you want from God. God recognizes his son Jesus and what he has done for you. And what you need to do now is understand this. Receive and believe it. Believe it and receive what Jesus has done. Because God acknowledges his son Jesus. Are you listening to me? God is not looking to that which Moses presented to the Israelites. We are living in the dispensation that Jesus is the mediator between God and you. We are not in the dispensation where Moses was the mediator between God and the people of Israel. And so you need to understand this. And then to know where you are in the now. Now, we also spoke about the difference between those of the law and those of grace. Gentiles who were considered Gentiles, you and I, were not part of the law that God established or instituted between He, God, the Father, and the children of Israel. Jesus, okay, Jesus is the end of the law. He came to fulfill the law and then brought everybody else into this new covenant. Everybody who believes into the new covenant, both the Jews and the Gentiles, not only the Gentiles and not only the Jews. So, so now everybody is part 
of this new law, whoever professes, professes or acknowledge he Jesus as Lord and Savior. You see the difference? Now, when you get this, when you have gotten this, then you now understand where you are. So when you understand where you are, then you begin to live your life with a clear understanding. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 talks about the fact that understanding will keep you. Understanding will surely keep you because when you have an understanding, you know what you are about and what you are doing. But if you don't know that, anything, you know, less than that, it will put you in a state of confusion because you will be applying the old in the new. And beloved, I keep saying and saying and saying again, it will not work. You hear a lot of people, a lot of, you know, even preachers using the, 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 the things of the old in the new. Beloved, it only puts you in a place of constant, you know, cycle put you in a place of constant sake because you have not made your mind on one thing your mind is everywhere and when you are in that position beloved you are as confused as the word confused so you need to understand that and make up your mind you cannot fall for everything if you don't stand for something you will fall for everything and it is just Something that is seen in most Christians. You, I mean, you, you, you are, you are everywhere following everything. Everywhere following everything. Whatever sounds good in you, you're hearing, you are following it. Whatever looks okay, you are following it. But is it solving your problems? Are you getting a lasting solution to what you are chasing? If the answer is yes, fine. If it's no, then I want you to know that you are the best candidate for you to understand this. That until you come to understand the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant where God is concerned with his people, that's you, you will be mixing everything together and you're not going to have a lasting solution. And so you first have to understand that the, the, uh, the dispensation or the time you are living in and what God has instituted between He, God the Father, and you and who is the mediator. When you understand that, things will begin to fall in place. Are you listening to me? In this dispensation of grace and truth, it's not about works. It's about your faith. In the dispensation of the old covenant, it was about the works. What you have to do for God to do what he has to do. In this dispensation of grace and truth, it's about your faith in what Jesus has done. You see the difference? So when you understand this, you then activate your faith in a total trust and belief in what Jesus has done. And beloved, that will make life much easier for you than what you have to work for, you have to struggle for. Think it. And, then, and, and the, the seriousness of this is that what you think you have to do for God to bless you is not what it is. It's not even what it is because God it's not, I mean, he hasn't changed. This is, this is the new agreement he has put in place. He's not taking or responding to you in the old agreement. He's not subjected in performing, okay, to you in the old agreement, which interestingly, you are supposed to perform all of it. You are supposed to work all of it. James chapter 2, I believe, says that if you even fail in one of the laws or the agreement or the, the, the contract, if you fail in one, you have failed all of it. 
So how do you think that you 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 can perform all of it? That three, I mean, six hundred and thirteen of it. How do you think you're going to be able to do that? If you fail one, you have failed all. Beloved, this is why I said, just leave. Don't even try touching it. Okay? And the, the, the other side of it is, it's, it's attached with a curse. That if you are not able to also fulfill all the 613 curse of which follows you. Now, beloved, how do you think you want to live a life like that? How do you think you want to live a life like that? That if you are not able to fulfill all, the curse associated with it becomes your portion. Curse. And if you are even able to fulfill, what, 612, Okay, and you fail one, the thirteenth one, you have failed all. Now, now you tell me, you, do you want that headache? I, certainly, I don't, and I want to. I don't want to live a life like that. I don't think I can, and I, I don't even think I want to think about it. And so I am, I, I am embracing with all my heart, with all my life, everything concerning me of what Jesus has done. Romans chapter 10, the 10th chapter, the 4th verse, talks about Jesus is the end of the law. He came, he is the only person who was, is, and shall ever be able to fulfill all of that law. Jesus was the, the only person who was able to do that. And so if he has done that for me, and he has brought me into this new covenant, why do I want to go into that old covenant? that which I couldn't do and nobody, nobody was able to do and try to seek things for my life. Why do I want to do that? Beloved, let's make, you know, make, make, make things bit, a bit easy for yourself. Okay? Just do that. It's just, just make things easy for yourself because if you don't do that, you will be on this track. And, and, and ask yourself, ask yourself, how many times have you been asked to fulfill the thing? Or probably you didn't even know that what you were asked to do were all part of the old covenant. Maybe you didn't know that. But beloved, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, you are not required, okay, to do things in your ability so that God then will unleash his blessings on you. No. God is not expecting your long fastings. God is not expecting your long prayers. God is not expecting, you know, your 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 seeds of of uh, of of a thousand dollars and all that all that tricks and manipulations that comes with it. God is not expecting you. So so beloved when God is not expecting all of that before he blesses you, again, ask yourself, do you think that all that you've done in the past is what God has used that to bless? Of course, religion will tell you, oh, look, you have no idea the way I have saved, the way I save people, the way I save, you don't think God will bless me? The way, it doesn't take works in this dispensation for God to bless you. God is not blessing you because of your works. God is blessing you because of your belief in what Christ Jesus has done. Your belief is not by your works. And we're going to be looking at some scriptures, pick it up from where we left off in this couple of days and then come to where we ought to be today. So if you understand that, Say amen and open your Bibles with me if you have your Bibles. If not, take this note now and uh, please make references to it for your understanding and growth. <clears throat> amen. Romans, we, we looked at Romans, the, um, the, 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 the second chapter. We also look at Romans, the third chapter. We've been to the fourth chapter. I believe that's where we left off. We're going to quickly glance through this and then come to where we ought to be. All right. 
um, looking at the difference between the law and grace, those of the law of Moses, the law of Moses, okay, people that was established for were the Jews or the Israelites. And we saw that in Romans, the second chapter, the, um, the 14 and the 15 verse. But I want us to read um, from verse 12 and then finish with 15 and continue quickly. All right. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. So we're talking about the law. Looking at the contracts between the law and grace. The law of Moses and the grace by Jesus. Are you listening? So that will, that also shows you the dispensations and the covenant that God established or has with his people. We are living in a new covenant. I want you to write that, okay, on the tablets of your heart. I am a new covenant believer. I am a new covenant Christian. I'm a new covenant person. Beloved, let me, let me share this with you and say this. If you say you are a Christian, I want you to know there was no Christianity in the old covenant. No. Christianity did not did not start in the new in the old covenant. So get that. So if you want to apply the old into your life, well, there ain't nothing like Christianity over there. It was the law. It was the law. What do you have to abide by for God to do what he has to do for you? Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go there. If you miss any of the, the, the segment, go to the YouTube, please, and uh, make references to what we have already spoken about. Now, and so here, looking at the difference between uh, the law <clears throat> and the dispensation in which we live in, come look at that. Um, for verse 12 <clears throat> of uh, Romans, Romans chapter 2, verse 12, for all who have sinned without the law will also perish without regard to the law and all who have sinned under the law will be judged and condemned by the law so you want to live your life according to the law okay and all that you know quotations that is used which the scripture talks about in and um, um, in uh, hebrews chapter 8 that it's absolute the things of the old is absolute in the noun Get this revelation yet. The things of the old is absolute in the now. I don't know why people are still using it. Only to just for, I guess, to the ignorant. Me when, I mean, when I hear preachers or people using that and making, you know, using that to, to make showcase whatever they want to preach, I look at them like, do you really understand the times you are living in? A lot of things, I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. And it tells you that they, they, they don't know it themselves. They don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. We were discussing some things yesterday. And um, it's really true that a lot of people have learned. They learn the things that they are doing and saying. They learn it. They learn it from people that they thought knew. They learn it. It's amazing. They learn some of this and they, they use what, you know, Joyce would say, a template. The template of what somebody has been using for a while and all that, and they, they fancy it and they use it, they pick it up, and they also using it, thinking that that is the right, you know, thing to do. Verse 12 For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. So, also perish without the law. And all who have sinned against the law will be judged and condemned by the law. For it is not, verse 13, for it is not those who merely hear the law as it is read aloud, who are just or righteous before God. But it is those who actually obey the law who will be justified, pronounced free of the guilt of sin and declared acceptable to him. Now look at verse 14. When Gentiles... Who do not have the law when Gentiles who do not have the law since it was given only to the Jews okay do instinctively the things the law requires guided only by their conscience they are law to themselves 
though they do not have the law. So again, my question is, why are you, <clears throat> excuse me, why are you picking up things that has nothing to do with you and putting it on yourself? The trick of this whole thing here is how easy it sounds to put fear in people and therefore it's used you know to accomplish their their personal goals in the absence of the knowledge of the people verse 15 they show that the essential requirements of the law are written in their hearts and their and their conscience their sense of right and wrong their moral choices bear witness and their thoughts alternatively accusing or perhaps defending them. This is pointing, beloved, to you to, to showcase the difference between those who the law was instituted for and, and those who were not. And so find yourself in those two areas. Were you part of the Jews who the law was written for or you are part of the Gentiles who Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law? Check yourself. Now come with me to chapter 3 quickly. This is um, just recapping from what we read in this uh, day or two. And we came to chapter 3 of Romans, still in Romans. We also read from the 19th and the 20th verse, saying that now we know that whatever the law of Moses says, it speaks to those who are under the law. Again, ask yourself, am I under the law or am I under grace? Am I an Old, Old Testament believer or am I a New Testament believer? Am I an Old Covenant believer or I am a New Covenant believer? And again, Testament is different from Covenant. I spoke to you about that and I'm not going to repeat myself. Please check it. <clears throat> so now let's read the verse um, 19. Now those, now we know that whoever, whatever, sorry, though we know that whatever the law of Moses says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So that the, the excuses of every mouth may be silenced from protesting and that all the world may be held accountable to God and subject to his judgment. 20. For no person will be justified free of guilt and declared righteous in his own sight by trying to do the works of the law. Listen to this very carefully. No person will be justified, okay? In other words, you will not be free of guilt and declared righteous in the sight of God by trying to do the works of the law. The works of the law. For though, for through the law, we became conscious of sin. Through the law, we became conscious of sin. And the recognition of sin directs us towards repentance. But it provides no remedy for sin. There's, it doesn't provide any remedy for sin. The only remedy for sin is through Christ Jesus. Verse 21, but now the righteousness of God has been declared or has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law. Though it is actually confirmed by the law and towards, um, uh, and uh, uh, by the law and the words and writings of the prophets, the righteousness of God comes through faith in Christ Jesus. The righteousness, okay, of God, the righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't come through the law. So if you want to be listening to those teachers and preachers of the law, picking things, I'll give you an example like the last book of uh, the Old Testament, which is what? Um, 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 Malachi. Picking things from there and applying it to your life. Beloved, Malachi is part of the law. So if you want to take one, make sure you've taken all to apply it into your life. Just in case you don't know that. 
That was part of the law. Interestingly, how think God was dealing even with the specific people, even the priests and the preachers of them. Yet, religion will pick that up and try to bring and, and try to bring it here into this new dispensation and this new covenant to let you apply it into your life. How are you going to do that? It's almost like, you know what? I'm going to the bathroom, but let me take an old dirty water, okay, to take a shower so I can be cleansed. I mean, ah, think about that. That's probably what it is. Because the, the serious part, the seriousness of this is, beloved, if you are not able, if you want to just take one, make sure you've taken all. Maybe you don't know that and nobody has taught you that. But you need to listen to this and please tell everybody, if you want to pick one, make sure you pick all. Because if you don't pick all, and I make sure all of it is applied in your life, if you break one, if you break one of that, according to you know uh, James chapter 2, if you break one, you've broken all. And just in case you didn't know that there are curses that is associated with the law. That if you are not able to fulfill it. And so you need to understand that. Ignorance is not good. You can be speaking well with eyeglasses, with whatever and all that. But if you are ignorant about this, you'll be just talking anyhow. And when a blind is leading a blind, everybody else go into a ditch. Christians need to really come into this and get it right. Yesterday, I somebody sent me a, a video of um, one of the brothers in the faith, and you know, he, he's changed. I mean, he's had a change of heart. He had a change of heart. He's now gotten the veil off his face. The veil is off his face and until that veil comes off your face you will see you'll be looking through a veil and and seeing the things of the old to apply it in the new now that the veil is off his face man what it uh, i'm personally i'm not surprised because i know as i say everybody's going you are going to get it because god cannot change for you god ain't going to change for you forget that you have believed that yeah well you know, you, um, um, you, you have to, you have to sow so that God will bless. Well, if you believe the, all that, well, that's fine. That is a wax. That is the wax in the old. So continue to do that, and continue to get the little, little ones that little whatever comes with it. But when the veil goes off, you realize that God is not expecting you to do that before he blesses you. But think about that. Do you think that all that so-called sowing and sowings, that sowings, that, that has brought you to where you are? Do you think that, 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 are you serious? Think about it. Do you think that is, is, is giving God, you know, uh, uh, the bribe for him to keep you alive? You are kidding. And we are believe all that. So you need to understand this. You need to understand the dispensation in which you are living in and what covenant God has instituted and established with you so that you can live a full and complete life. Because while you think you are doing it, you see, it's really not getting you nowhere. Your righteousness is not through your works. Your righteousness is through your faith in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 20 again. For no person will be justified or free of guilt and declared righteous in the sight of God by trying to do the works of the law. For through the law, we become conscious of sin and recognition of sin direct us towards repentance, but... It provides no remedy for the sin. Verse 21, But now the righteousness of God has been clearly revealed independently and completely apart from the law. Though it is actually confirmed by the law and, and words and writings of the prophets, 
The righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those Jews and Gentiles. Like I said earlier, now everybody is part of this new covenant if you believe. It's about your belief system. If you believe. This righteousness, verse 22 again, this righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all those Jews and Gentiles who believe and trust in Him and acknowledge Him as God's Son. There's no distinction. There is no distinction now between the old, the Jews and the Gentiles. You know why? Look at verse 23 again. Since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God. And are being justified and declared free of the guilt of sin. Made acceptable to God and granted eternal life. Eternal life. As a gift by His precious undeserved grace. Through the redemption, the payment of our sin. Which is provided in Christ Jesus. So we read that also. And then came to chapter 4. Chapter 4 of Romans. We just caption so that we can get to where we ought to be and then continue. Now, chapter 4, we read, therefore, looking at the justification of the righteousness of Abraham, it was not through his works. It was through his faith. It was through his faith. So if you want to, if you, like somebody said, if you want to tap, tap into the blessings of Abraham, and it says, Abraham's blessings are mine. You need to have a better understanding of who you are talking about. Abraham's justification was by faith, not by works. Not by works. <clears throat> Look at it, verse, verse 1. What then shall we say? We read that yesterday. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, our forefather humanly speaking, has found, has he obtained a favor standing? For if Abraham was justified, that is acquitted from the guilt of sin of his sins by works, those things he did that were good, he has something to boast about, but not before God. If Abraham was justified, if his justification was by works, then he has something to boast that, well, I did it. You know, I did that. You know, you know, like you hear the, the religious people say that you know, I prayed for you. You know, I pray for you and you got your breakthrough. I, I, I. You hear, do you hear them? Mm. I pray for you and you got your breakthrough. You, you don't even know. <clears throat> you better bring the offering. You, you, you better bring the tithes. You know, you don't know. I spent all night. I'm praying for you and all that. You, you see how the religious people talk. And I know some of you have heard that. I used to hear this. So it's not just you. Maybe maybe you are different on a different wavelength. But I used to hear that. Man, I'm praying for you. You don't know. Man, I don't sleep. <clears throat> and then, you know, all those special... <laughs> is, that, is that African thing? <laughs> oh, God. Look at verse 5. <clears throat> but no one who does not work... So he's we're looking at how Abraham was justified not by the works... Okay, but by his faith, the activation of his faith. Now, you know that the covenant that God made with Abraham was with a promise. The promise of the son who will come and save the life of man from their sins. But to one who does not work, that is, uh, you know what, well, let's just continue to read from verse 2. For if Abraham was justified, that is acquitted from the guilt of his sin by works, those things he did, that were good. He has something to boast about, but not before God. For what the scripture says, Abraham believed, he believed in, he trusted, relied on God, and it was credited to his account as righteousness. In other words, having a right standing with God. So your right standing with God, it's not by your works. It's by your faith. Having a right standing with God, it's not by your works. It's by your faith. If you believe that, say amen. 
verse 4. Now to a laborer, he is a laborer, his wages are not credited as a favor or a gift, but as an obligation, something owed to him. The laborer works for his pay or her pay. That's what he's saying. But to the one who does not work, that is the one who does not try to earn his salvation by doing good, but believes, underline that word there, believes and completely trusts in whom, in him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is credited to him as righteousness. His faith, faith is, faith will, will, will credit or position you for your righteousness, having a right standing with God. Your faith. Your faith. Yesterday, I think I, I, I brought this thing up. Um, Hebrews 11, verse 6, talks about without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Without faith. Without faith. Not without works. Not without works. Not without all the things that you... You know, you've been, you've been asked to do, and you, you're going to do this, you have to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that, without all that. But it's without your faith. God wants to see your faith, not your doubt in Him. Amen? All right, if you believe that, say amen. Now, watch this. And in the same way, David speaks as of the blessing on the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Apart from works. We read that and quickly so that we can catch up with where we all be. Come to verse 13. Please read the rest. Come to verse 13. For the promise of Abraham or his descendants that he will be heir of the world was not through observing the requirements of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Okay? The promise of Abraham to be the father of all was not by works, was by his faith. Absolutely trust, absolute trust and reliance on God. And so if those who are followers of the law are like, oh, so verse, verse 14 again. So if those who are followers of the law are the true heir of Abraham, then faith leading to salvation is of no effect, is of no use. It's null and void. And the promise of God is nullified. If, therefore, you who claim that you are descendants of Abraham, your, 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 your blessings think that through your salvation came through by your works, then, again, the promises that God made to Abraham by his faith is of no effect, is of no use. That's what he said. That's what he's saying. Then it's of no use. How can Abraham believe God and was credited to his account as righteous? And you think that you declaring that you are seed of Abraham, you, you have to work to receive your salvation in that manner or receive your blessings in that manner. How, what, what makes you think that? You see how confused, you know, people, uh, uh, some believers are. You claim you are you are descendant of Abraham, but Abraham was 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 righteous by his faith. But you, the descendant, as you claim, you think that you, you your works is what will get you the blessings of him. How is that? You see how confused you are. So it's very very important. It's very important that. Um, you understand this. And if you don't do that, beloved, you're not going to even enjoy the benefit of the dispensation in which you live in. Verse 15. For the law results in God's wrath against sin. But where there is no law, there is no violation of it either. Therefore, inheriting the promise de depends entirely on faith, not on works. Therefore, therefore, look at verse 16. Therefore, Inheriting the promise of Abraham depends entirely on faith. That is the confident and trust in the unseen God. 
That is what Abraham did. Abraham didn't see God face to face physically as, as you are seeing me. But Abraham believed. His belief got him into that position of righteous person where God is concerned. And if God calls you a righteous person, who can say that you are not righteous? And so your righteousness is through faith, not by works. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith that is confident trust in the unseen God. In order that it may be given as an act of grace. Here we see that word again, that the, that the time we are living in grace, the unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham, not only for those Jewish believers, okay, who keep the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. The spiritual father of us all. Did you hear that? So it's not only for, for this specific people, it's for you as well. Believe your belief system. And so if your belief system is, is, um, is, is not, you know, um, um, activated, you need to check that. If not, see, it's either you believe or it's either you work. Either you believe, okay, your salvation, you believe, for your salvation or you work for your salvation and beloved you cannot work for your salvation either you believe in God to receive or you have to work but your work will not give you what you your belief system is going to give you because God is pleased when he sees your faith he's not looking for your works how much works do you think you can do how much performances Though that religious, it's religious performances, observances. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do that. We are hitting 21 day fasting. So that we, so that we, you know, God, we, you know, and, and I don't know, I've been there before too. How you put a time, a timeline, you know, for, for heaven to, to declare, for heaven to hear you, for God to respond. Man, like somebody said yesterday, how dare you? <laughs> Put in a time. You on earth and you are putting a time. Well, yeah, because you know what? Religion will tell you, oh, the prophet was a man like us and he said there will be no rain for three and a half years and there was no rain. And therefore you are, I don't know when you became that prophet. You, you, you want to be. No, beloved, God deals with his people by dispensation and by, by covenant. You need to understand the covenant he has established with you and the dispensation in which you are living in. And so I caution a lot of people about taking people's prayer, like the prayer of David or prayer of somebody and, and, and then you put it in your life. Well, what are, when are you going to be authentic? When do you think, do you think God, ask yourself, did God create me in the, in the, in the shadow of David or in the shadow of Hannah? or in the shadow of Elizabeth, or in the shadow of, uh, of uh, Ezekiel, or in the shadow of the, or God made me authentic as Patrick. Ask yourself. All right. So, um, and then we came to chapter five. Chapter five. We come to chapter five now. Therefore, since we have been justified, that is acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith. Let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, if you haven't come to the place, this place of getting this, then beloved, you are still in bondage. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to tell you this. Then you are still in the place where you haven't even, you haven't started yet. Since we have been justified, and that is acquitted of sin, because a lot of people are still going around, 
you know, in guilt and living in guilt and condemnation. I don't care about what you say about me or what, what are you thinking of me or what you've heard of me. That's your business. I know who I am and what where I am in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. And my relationship with God. Hallelujah. You come to um when we get to the the uh, the eight verse, you know what the eight chapter. Come there quickly and um, and come there quickly. The eight chapter. We, we, are, we are coming there all, all you know, we are coming there, but I want to just make a point here. Look at the eight chapter of uh, Romans verse one. Therefore, there, therefore there is now no condemnation, no guilt, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. No guilt, no condemnation. So why are you living in guilt and condemnation? Then you are not in Christ. Because if you are in Christ and you believe, you believe that you are in Christ, there's no guilt or condemnation. You don't have to live in guilt and condemnation. You are in Christ. Beloved, think about that. If you are in Christ, therefore, now there is now no condemnation. So if you feel condemned and and so you have to let somebody let you feel condemned and you have to do this and you have therefore you have to you know do all these rituals to get yourself back with God and be in a red in the red stands right standing with God and all that. Beloved, you then you don't know who you are yet. And then you don't know who you are yet. And for you to know who you are, believe, receive and believe what Jesus has done for you which you can do for yourself. You cannot do for yourself. Are you listening to me? Now, so here, let's read that again. Verse 2, um, no, verse, verse 1, chapter 5, Romans. Therefore, since we have been justified, okay, that is acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith, by faith, by faith. Come on, say by faith. Say by faith. It is faith, not works not works by faith let us grab the fact that we have peace with god you got peace. man i tell you i got peace i sleep and i sleep well i don't know about you i don't know about you but i'm telling you hmm let us grab the peace let's let us grab the peace that we have do you really have peace with god and the joy of reconciliation. The joy of reconciliation, beloved. Oh my goodness, I think I can close with this one. The joy of reconciliation. You have been you have been reconciled back to God. Think about that. Beautiful. You have been reconciled back to God. God has received you back. It's no longer, you know, God looking at you as a sinner. He's looking at you as a righteous person because of your faith in him. Let us grab the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Look at verse 2. Through him, we also have access by faith. Hallelujah. Through him, we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Which dispensation are you living in? The law or grace? The law of Moses or grace and truth by Jesus? You, you, you have to know where you are to enjoy what is in there. Through him, look at that, through who? Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, the, the Messiah, the anointed one is anointing. Ah, through him, we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellent excellence and power. All right, and not only this, 
but with joy let us exalt in our suffering and rejoice in our hardship, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patience, endurance. And then endurance proves character, spiritual maturity, that is. Improving character, hope, and confidence, assurance of eternal life. Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Get that revelation here. Through who? The Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, do you have him? If you do have the Holy Spirit, beloved, you ain't going to be falling for all that, you know, demands and all the things that you are constantly put on. If you do, he's going to tell you this morning, uh, I was I was standing, you know, preparing myself for the broadcast this morning and the Holy Spirit just pointed me to something interesting for the first time. We have received, my myself and wife have received this gift, if you will. I think this is probably the third time, this time. So the Holy Spirit said, watch, watch something. How are you going to get, receive something like this? And I said, baby, come and look at something. This is not right. This is not right. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. This is not right. When you have the Holy Spirit, He will expose certain things to you. He will open you up. Because you see, with the Holy Spirit, the veil huh, comes off. <laughs> and you can see well. <laughs> Look at verse 6. While we were still helpless, powerless to provide for our salvation at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for our ungodliness. Look at how much God loves us. Look at how much He loves us. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you. Verse 12. Let's do this. I think we're going we're gonna to end with chapter 5. Verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world, all right, through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all people, no one being able to stop it or escape its power because they all sinned. Sin was committed in the world before the law. Something I need you to see that. Sin was committed before the law. Sin was committed before the law. So I want you to see and get this understanding. Sin was committed in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone when there is no law against it. Get the revelation here. Get the revelation here. So don't go around, if you have believed this and you understand this, don't go around and talk, call, call, see yourself as a sinner. You're not a sinner. I am not a sinner. I don't care what you think about me. I'm not. Not by the word. Not by understanding the word of God. Rightly dividing the word. Glory be to God. Amen. Look at verse 14. Yet death rule over mankind from Adam to Moses, the lawgiver, even over those who had not sinned, as Adam did. Adam is a type of Christ who was to come, but in reverse, Adam, watch this, and I'm going to close with this one. I promise. Adam brought destruction. Christ brought salvation. Get that. I want you to circle it and see where you are. Has your salvation come? And in your salvation, there's no requirement of observances of the law and its sacrifices. In your salvation. Adam, look at verse, the last stanza of um, verse 14. Adam brought destruction. Christ brought salvation. Adam brought destruction. 
Christ brought salvation. Adam brought destruction. Christ brought salvation. Get that revelation here. Look at verse 15. Uh, I promise, so let me just keep my promise. We'll continue from verse 15. <laughs> we'll continue from here tomorrow, okay? Listen, you see the importance of receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior so that you can live your, your freedom through Him so that you won't be under the entanglement of sin and its intricacies so that you can receive freely your salvation through Christ Jesus, that you will no longer have to live your life in guilt and in condemnation. With that clear understanding, you are not living to please nobody, but to please He the Father. He is the one who has an agreement or contract or covenant with you. Are you listening? The new covenant. Listen to that. The new covenant. God doesn't God does not have an old covenant with you. He has a new covenant with you. So look into the new covenant and all that is in it through Christ Jesus and fulfill it and live your life. And leave that old covenant and its laws and all that, leave them where they are. Now you want to use something to make a point, fine, but don't apply it into your life. That's the difference. And I'm close. And you need to receive Jesus and make him your Lord and your Savior. That is how you're going to enjoy this life of grace and truth. This dispensation of grace and truth. This, dying, this time concerning your salvation. That's the only way you're going to enjoy it. So receive Jesus. I present Jesus to you. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Hmm. You are looking for happiness. You are looking for peace. You are looking for joy. You are looking for good health. You are looking for strength. You are, huh? You are looking for power. <laughs> you are looking for power. Listen, you can find all that in Jesus. Yes, you can get all that in Jesus. It's exciting. Oh Lord, I tell you. It's exciting. You know, it, it's, it's, it's exciting when you come to know all that you've been struggling for. That you realize that all oh, that was just my own ability trying to do things, trying to get things done. But here you are that you don't have to struggle. Jesus has done it all. And then he has even sent us, you and I, the Holy Spirit. His Spirit to help us in our everyday life and living. So receive Jesus. I mean, what, what more can I offer you? That's all I have. I don't know what else to offer you with whatever you are going through, whatever chat, beloved, that which you are calling a headache is not a headache if you have Jesus. All right? He says, he says come unto me, all you who are heavy laden. Eh? Is that what he says? Come unto me. All you who, you are burdened with so much that you don't even know. Come unto me. Give me your burden. Give me your burden. He said, my yoke is easy. Take upon you. My, my yoke is easy. Receive Jesus and give him all that headache and see. Beloved, if he cannot take care of it for you, then I don't know who else. Because that's who I have to present him to you. So if you are that individual watching me wherever you are right now, without any wasting time, receive him. Bible says that if you believe him in your heart, you see we've been talking about belief. Abraham believed and was counted to him as a righteous person where God was concerned. Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess him with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Mm-hmm. You'll be saved from what? Saved from all that distress, stress, anxiety, and all those things. You'll be, you'll be saved. And you'll be saved not only, you know, in this lifetime, but also life eternal. Receive Jesus. Make him, the, 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 enjoy him. I'm telling you, you want, 
All those things I mentioned is in Jesus. If you are that person, I want to pray with you right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I, I need you in my life. I need a Savior. Today, this moment, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. The sins that I committed of not knowing you. I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to know you. I receive you, therefore, into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. From this day, baptize me with your spirit that I may live according to your plan. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You, you are born again. Your, your, your spirit has been transformed. Your spirit has been transformed and you're going to see the manifestation of it in your practical, physical life. Don't stop right there. Make sure you get your Bible. Now he is going to be talking to you through his word. He is the word. So he, when you open your Bible, God speaks to you. All right? And when you pray, when you pray, you speak to him. So get your Bible. If you, if you don't have one, get one. If you cannot financially afford one, please let us know. We will do our best to send you one. Okay? Wherever you are, whichever corner of the face of this earth, we'll make sure the Bible gets to you. If this message has been a blessing to you, share it. Do a watch party with it. All right? Tag a friend. Bless them with it. Even as you are blessed. But if you just also give your life to the Lord Jesus, don't stop right there. You need to be part of the body of Christ. All right? The, the disciples of Christ. The, 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 the fellowship of Christ. Look in your geographic location where you live. Whichever country you are watching me. Look for a Bible-believing, teaching church or fellowship. Go there. You, you, you are part of us. Go there and introduce yourself. Let them know that you are born again. You have received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And tell them to baptize you. In water, they will baptize you. Okay? Now, I pray that the, the power of Christ and his spirit will be your portion. I pray your baptism in the Holy Spirit that he will come so strong upon you that you will begin to rise up and do the things that you've been struggling to do to give him glory. Then you can share to know that God is real. You can share with others. Join me this and every morning, Monday through Friday, 10 Eastern Standard Time, 9 Central, 2 p.m. GMT. And uh, make sure that um, if you miss any of the broadcasts, please go to the YouTube. Go to YouTube. Click, put the name there of this ministry, Patrick Quenu Global Ministries or Patrick Quenu Ministries. And uh, click on the button that says subscribe. It's a free subscription. It will pop up a lot of the messages will come for you to get more of the teachings for your growth and increase. This is what this ministry is about. To showcase the goodness of God, the time and the contract, the agreement, the covenant we, are live, we have with God. We have a new covenant. And so we are new people. Hallelujah. Uh, isn't that exciting? Enjoy your, your life in Christ Jesus. Let me give you one scripture for you to go home with. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Go and read it. And enjoy your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you. I want you to know you don't have no problem. You don't have no trouble. You don't. You got to receive Jesus and receive him right. If you also want to be a blessing, financial blessing to this ministry, for us to be able to get Bibles, to help those in need and all that, you can send your donation as well. 
Free will donation. Nobody is twisting your arm for you to do anything. Nobody. You can send your free will donation to be a blessing to this ministry and be part of this ministry. Let me hear from you as well. The information for you to donate, send your donation is on your screen. If you want to use your cash app or your Zelle, the number is there. If you want to use your credit card on PayPal, go to the website of this ministry, all right, and uh, click on the word that says donate. Follow the rest of the instructions. May the eyes of the Lord be watching constantly between us. And until I come your way, same time tomorrow, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God and in all that getting. Get understanding. See everybody.